The University of Minnesota Duluth Theater Department hosts the world premiere of Maxa, the Maddest Woman in the World, next week. Described as a horror musical, the production relates the story of Paula Maxa, a famed French actress who died on stage thousands of times in her career. Here's more on that production. The musical is Maxa, the Maddest Woman in the World. It's a horror musical, and it was written by our wonderful faculty member, Thomas Jacobson, with his playwright partner in crime, Mika Kaufman. And it's about Paula Maxa, who was a great French actress in the early 1900s. She worked at the Grand Guignol, which was a theater of horror and torture. And essentially, she's the actress who has died the most times on stage. They come here for a show so they can feel something, something in their insignificant lives. And night after night after night, they watch me die. I play young Paula. I'm a student here, and I'm a senior BFA acting major. Oh, her life literally led her to this stage and she used every traumatic event, every experience in her life to mold her as that amazing actress. A lot of the themes is surviving forgiveness, trusting in yourself, and not letting that anger, possibly even hatred towards yourself, stop you from growing as a person. I am the stage manager for Maxa. This is my first stage management role. It's very new and unique, especially given that it was written by one of our faculty members and that we have the opportunity to fully produce it before it ventures elsewhere. So we are following COVID protocols on campus with the mask mandates, but when we transition to rehearsing on the stage and during performances, we will be unmasked. Audience members will have to wear masks. This is the first time that we're doing something inside the theater post-COVID. And now we're taking that, that next step to get back to where we were by getting the audience into the seats behind me uh, and the actors on the stage that we're on right now. So some of the themes that Maxa includes that's really important to be on the stage is how it handles survivorship and how we get through and process our trauma and be, we'll learn to become friends with it and move on in our lives with it. Well, especially in 2021, a lot of these things are coming up of the Me Too movement and just being able to speak about these events that go on, such as sexual assault and abuse. It's ultimately a show about surviving and persevering and still being here. Everyone who's acting in it is a student here at UMD. There's quite a few students who are student designers. Personally, like just being in the room, in a rehearsal room, and it's my favorite part of being a director is to just be in the space when other people are doing what they're you know, most gifted at. And so when we invite audiences into here to listen to a story, uh, to watch a story for the first time in a long time with other people, I think it'll mean a lot. Joining us now are the creators of the musical. Mika Kaufman wrote the book and the lyrics of Maxa, and Thomas Jacobson is the composer <laughs> of the music. And welcome to both of you. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, Mika, we'll start with you. What was your inspiration for this production? How did you come up with the idea? Oh my goodness, it's actually this one that came up with the idea. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> Uh, Thomas uh, had presented it to me. Do you want to do you want to? Sure. Say yeah, I I was going down a little rabbit hole of research on theater. I had watched a TV show called Penny Dreadful, and a segment of that show takes place at the Grand Guignol Theater. Granted, the one in London, not the Parisian one that ours is focused at, but being a huge lover of horror, I was really drawn to this and the, really into the fact this is the first time horror was ever performed. And so I just started researching the theater, and you, you can't get very far researching the Grand Guignol until you come across the name Paula Maxa. Mm -hmm. And when I came across her and learned about her story, I just asked myself, maybe, you know, do we have a musical here? So I pitched it to Mika to and see I what And I said, they would yes! <laughs> we started writing it. Yes. Well, maybe and give us the, the short course on her story. Oh, sure. So, um, in terms of in terms of the musical itself, um, so this is a story of survivorship. 
It's about uh, Paula Maxa at the Grand Guignol. She was a famous French tragedian. Uh, her scream was known throughout all of Paris. And, uh, which is funny, it's a musical with a lot of screaming. A lot of screaming. <laughs> and uh, her story is really just, it's, it's really, dives deep into sort of the intersection between trauma and healing. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do a lot of deep diving mm -hmm. into that and survivorship. Yeah. That is the most important part of the musical for us. So how mm -hmm. have the students and crew been to work with on this at UMD? They I'm so fantastic. proud of them. They're so fantastic. <laughs> really? Yes. It is an insanely talented group of students. That's good to hear. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, the, there is a content advisory for graphic depictions of violence, murder, gore, um, some tough conversations. It's clearly not for everyone. Yes. But who do you see as the primary audience, and what do you want them to take away from it? So I personally see whoever is able to come and see our show yeah. as the audience. Um, we dedicate our show to survivors, and as a survivor myself, it's always been extremely important that our show is as accessible as possible to other survivors. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, it's just not going to be accessible to right. everyone because it is seen through a horror lens as well. <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> and on top of that, we do touch on very traumatic topics just based on um, events that had happened in Paula Max's life. And I like, I love using the term content advisory instead of content warning. Content warning is so often used, <laughs> but with an advisory, it just really is letting our audience know, you know, like trauma is not something that is ugly. And it's something that we want to normalize and that we just really want to talk about and want to use as a gesture in a theatrical form mm -hmm. so that it mm -hmm. can be spoken about to is, our audiences. Is there any danger that um, putting it to music, you know, having it, having violence portrayed in, in this sort of a way kind of glorifies brutality at all? Well, it all depends on how it's presented. Uh -huh. um, for, for example, in our show, the moments that are very bloody are comical and over the top, highly melodramatic. Mm -hmm. The moments that deal with these issues are, we treat as respectfully as possible and they are not shown and they are not gratuitous. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we use a lot of shadow play. Mm -hmm. Because again, that's just something that to me as a survivor is way more accessible in that, in that way. Right. So what is the creative process for the two of you? How do you put this together? <laughs> <laughs> we love working with each other yeah, so yeah. much. <laughs> well, it's, it, the, I would say the show is probably 80% lyric first mm -hmm. and 20% music first. Generally what happens is Mika will send me a lyric and I will take it and just set it to music. And then there are times when we know the situation we want to tackle, but mm -hmm. we aren't quite sure how to get it going. So sometimes Mika will ask me, hey, could you just throw me maybe 16 bars of something? This is the <laughs> vibe, this is the mood. And yeah, I'll throw 16 bars their way and then that like, kind of sparks a lyric. Mm -hmm. And then we just, it just rolls from there. And we really work off of each other's energy as well. Yes. Like we know we have something good going when we're like, yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> both, we both have similar backgrounds as directors sure. and performers our, and singers ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that really helps our process. And the two of you bring energy. I can see that right now <laughs> to the production. Uh, what do you mean? So are, are you finding that the, the actors uh, and crew people are also absorbing some of that energy? We hope. We hope so. <laughs> I can see it. I can yeah. really see it. Um, our room is very special. It is very, very special, especially given the content that we are talking about with these students and that they, they're the ones who are performing uh, and they are handling it so well because we normalize these conversations around mental right. health and around trauma. Yeah. And we, we give them the, they know that they have the autonomy to come to us with questions, to come with us, come to us with concerns mm -hmm. and ideas. And they are truly, they're not just actors, they're truly collaborators. I need a quick process. answer. When and where are tickets available and when's the show? They are available at the UMD box office and it opens next Thursday the 14th and runs the 23rd. Okay, very fine. Thank you both for being All here right. tonight. Thank you. All right, Mika and Thomas, thank you much.